My free composition was on the pier, a violin and piano duet. The piece begins dolce, which is appropriate for its sweet melody that utilises stepwise patterns, complemented by occasional leaps and turns. It has a 3-4 metre, which reminisces a waltz. In contrast, the B section has a much darker atmosphere. It modulates from E-flat major to the relative C minor key. It has a murky, ascending accompaniment pattern, an occasional dissonance which suggests a different characteristic of the pier, perhaps at night or beneath the pier. After the B section, the listener is then reminded of the A section as it repeats with additional development. This composition is a piece of theme and variations for the piano and the oboe. That includes one main theme and three variations altered based on the theme melody. The melody is mostly played by the oboe, but at the same time, there are contrapuntal moments with melodies in both instruments. The first variation is trying to convey a rather sad mood while also showing peace. It is in the relative minor key of the main theme, and the range of the melody is across several octaves. The second variation shows the change from order to chaos, as it is quite ordered at the beginning. 
the section increases in volume as it approaches the end, and the ending chromaticism conveys dissonance and chaos. The last variation is a lively and playful section as the melody runs in fast rhythms, and the dialogues between the two instruments imply the joyful mood and end the piece in excitement. After recently studying the first movement of Beethoven's pathetic piano sonata, I chose to write a bit of music called Sturm und Drang, which was also for piano and in a similar style to Beethoven. Like Beethoven, I also wanted to write a dynamic and expressive bit of music, which I did with the help of some musical features such as fast ascending chords, which you can hear in the piece.
Thriller is composed to be set against a trailer for a film about a theme park. Within this piece, I've tried to create a few of the rides that you would classically find or think about when you mention a theme park, through the musical elements. This paints a picture in the mind of the listener of all the things that make up a theme park. I did this by taking the char- characteristics of each wind and match it to a musical feature. For example, the roller coaster has fast runs of notes to reflect the speed of the roller coaster, and for my haunted house I used chromaticism to portray the eerie atmosphere. I also wanted this piece to be exciting and thrilling, hence the name. This was so that it would intrigue the listener, and I did this by using a mostly major key throughout the piece. To further increase the excitement, I had a change of mood with a minor section with my haunted house. This also reflects that this is for a film trailer, as most films will have a mood change. This piece, Allegro and G, is about two people, instruments, coming together to produce something wonderful and interesting. It contains a motif heard at the very beginning, played by the oboe, which keeps returning in various forms in sections A, B and A dash. The textures used are mostly melody-dominated homophony, however there are monophonic and contrapuntal moments. They all add to the characterful melody. 
I have tried to create a sense of contrast, unity and echo within this piece, supported by the ABCA structure, as the flute and oboe repeat, emphasise and build on one another. My piece is mostly diatonic to show the tranquillity between the instruments. I exploited both the flute and oboe in various ways, for example by using complicated motifs that ensures both instruments are playing together and must listen to each other. Also, I used a large range of notes, especially for the flute, to ensure I exploit the instruments. This piece is intended for a concert, which can be both formal and informal, at dinners or other suitable locations for anyone to enjoy. I have always loved the poem Invictus by W.E. Hendley, and so when I had the opportunity to put it to music for my GCSE, I jumped at it. I have always felt it to be a powerful and yet melancholy poem. Therefore I chose to make my music in A minor, which adds to the sorrowful nature of the music, whilst the fact that there are minimal sharps or flats makes it accessible to many musicians. Diatonic harmony with primary triads and regular cadences allows it to have a solid, grounded feel. In the first verse, I gave the piano rippling, constant quavers to give it a feel of magic, and the verse-only structure means that there is no distracting from the central message of the poem. Those among you who know this poem well may notice that stanza two and stanza three are the other way around in my setting to music. This is because I felt it gave my song a greater feel of building towards the great grand final statement of perfect cadences at the end with the line, I am the captain of my soul. I hope you enjoy it.
This piece is written for a brass duet. For me, my second composition was all about creating contrast between the two motifs. The first one, which was loud, which was fanfare-like, and the second, which was calmer. And making sure that it was clear to the listener that they were two different ideas and what each section was conveying. So I use different musical techniques, for example, section A is louder and more intrusive with both instruments, the horn and the trumpet, constantly playing. And in section B, the instruments were played quietly and have solo lines incorporated. Once again, development was key. So I made section A have longer notes and section A dash have shorter notes and more imitation. When I was composing this piece of music, I wanted to take the person listening on a bit of a journey. Uh, because I was writing a theme and variation as the music progresses, it gets more complex as it goes on. My piece starts off with a simple melody a, and a simple chordal accompaniment. My next variation uses a similar accompaniment with a more complicated rhythm uh, with a lot of the note values that have been doubled compared to the original theme. Uh, my next variation, I use dotted rhythms to give it a syncopated feel, then I contrast that bright mood with the next variation moved into a minor key with some dramatic chords and some dissonance um, in the accompaniment, uh, and more dynamic emphasis on the phrasing. Uh, the following variation, the piano takes the tune, uh, with the trombone taking the accompaniment, which allows me to um, explore the different instruments' capabilities, and finally my last variation tries to combine um, elements of the previous variations and this variation has the most uh, dynamic variation and ends with the largest ending sequence that builds up tension that is resolved by a chord one at the end to finish it off. <laughs> Thank you.
This second piece helps one navigate through a theme park with the oboe and piano. The first ride is slow, repetitive merry-go-round, which just builds the foundations of the more exciting and scary ones to come. Next is the roller coaster with drops and twists, with piano playing some clashing chords to emphasise the suddenness of this unease on the ride, with a soon quick return to the merry-go-round to calm the nerves of the dips by using slow notes and having a quiet dynamic. The ghost train is to follow with the changing key to emphasise the frightfulness of the train compared to the other rides. Once again, the merry-go-round occasionally interrupting the chaos of the other rides with some calm and stillness, but then the person begins to feel queasy after these previous dramatic rides, so they have to leave the park, so they finish once on the merry-go-round and then leave. This composition is for a flute duet to back a smart casual drinks party. It was inspired by a number of pieces, for example, the constant quaver and semi-quaver rhythms from Allegretto by Telemann, and the creating moments of dialogue as well as chordal homophony by shifting the main melody between both parts from the Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy by Tchaikovsky from The Nutcracker. Generally, the flutes are thirds and fifths apart, which fits their range well and creates beautiful harmonies. Its rounded binary form helps create the simple, jolly atmosphere, giving it a light-hearted character. <laughs> <laughs> 